Well, can I give you a warm welcome to this talk? Now, today I'm going to carry on talking about the mutation that's arisen in Denmark. Two reasons for that. One is that this mutation itself may, may turn out to be significant. And the other reason is it's shown that mutations can occur in this virus, particularly if it's associated with coming from other intermediate animals, in this case mink, where mutation is likely to occur more rapidly and can be more significant, that these mutations can affect the immune profile of the virus, meaning our immune systems might not be able to recognise the virus as well, and meaning that a vaccine might not work against the new strain. So two pretty good reasons for looking at this really. And it also means that the virus could form a reservoir in other animals, potentially in wildlife, which means that we could be stuck with it for years and years to come. So very important we get a handle on this as early as possible. Now looking at the details, now we're fortunate that the Danish government is... Uh, as far as I can tell, it's been completely open on this. Has it moved as quickly as I would have liked it to have done? No. Um, has the World Health Organization moved as quickly as I'd liked it to have done? No, but they have done a full report yesterday, which we're going to look at, which is, which is good. But given that we are where we are at, the Danish government is very open and transparent. And this can be seen on its, uh, its website here. Now, the good thing about it is it does full reports in English as well, so no reason not to be informed if you'd like to be. Now, um, measures to reduce the spread in North Jutland, so the northern peninsula of Denmark, and the western peninsula, a lot of that is now closed off. I don't pretend to be familiar with these areas, but that's straight from the Danish government uh, website. So these areas are essentially closed off now, which is it's good that that's happened. Um, now, the concerning thing is in these areas, the Dutch government has said uh, many citizens are infected with a new version of the coronavirus from mink. Now, this is concerning. This is not uh, the 12 cases we originally thought. Many sounds more than 12 to me. So in this particular geographical area, it seems that this new mutation that mutated in the mink has gone into people and is now being passed to many people. And we believe that at least some of these are community transmission being tra passed from person to person. People who don't work directly on the mink farms. Now, what the Danish government have, is going to do is they're going to test virtually everyone in these areas. Now, what the Danish government are doing is they are diverting their testing capacity from other parts of the country. And they are throwing it all at these particular areas. And anyone who turns up positive for SARS coronavirus 2, they're going to have their full viral genome sequenced. And that will say whether it's an old type of coronavirus or whether it's the new mutated form from the mink. So they're going to sequence all positive tests. So that is quite quite a quite a big piece of science really to do that but it's uh, it's it's the right it's the right way to go for sure now going on to the main substance of today's talk who report um 6th of november now since june 2020 214 cases of sars coronavirus 2 variant associated with farmed mink and five different strains of mutant mink coronavirus in the 214 people so in other words, the virus has mutated, as far as we know, at least five times in mink. And this has been transmitted to people at least five times. And this has been going on since June 2020. So nothing new there. The virus has been mutating in mink and being passed to people. But what has changed is of the 5th of November, there's been these 12 cases that we know of. They do say many, but these 12 cases are documented with a new, unique new variant. So it looks like there's been four cases where the virus has been mutated in mink and gone to people since, when was it, since June? Yeah, since June. Um, but now there's a new case and this new mutation appears to be different and we'll see, we'll see why it's different. All 12 cases are identified in September 2020 in North Jutland. So they've only been... Um, 
yeah, this this is new. So this is in September. Okay, so th th these so this news is coming out quite late, isn't it? These twelve cases were identified in September, twenty twenty in North Jutland. So this is actually, yeah, it's longer than ago than I'd fully processed there. This has been going on for some time. Uh, same virus confirmed from mink. So in other words, what they've done here is they've tested they've tested the virus in the mink and they found a particular mutant. They've tested the virus in humans and they found exactly the same mutation. So it's been it's been officially diagnosed in mink and in uh, and in humans. Using whole genome sequences, unique combination of mutations has occurred. Um, now cases were identified in seven to seventy nine year olds. So wide variety of humans have been affected by this. Um, eight of the twelve had links to mink farms, so four didn't. So we know there's a minimum of four cases of community transmission of this new virus. Now we mentioned that there's been five types identified, so they've called this new variant Cluster 5. So this is the name of the mutated SARS coronavirus 2 variant. It's the fifth one they've identified, so they've called it Cluster 5, and it's the first one that has caused significantly increased rates of anxiety in the Danish authorities, and as we'll see in the British and German authorities as well. Combination of mu new mutations. Now the World Health Organization is saying there it's moderately decreased sensitivity to neutralizing antibodies. So these neutralizing antibodies are the antibodies that will neutralize the virus, means it's not, no longer infectious to our cells. Um, and it's saying that this is decreased. So this would apply to people that had the infection already. They're going to be less immune, presumably, than we had thought. But it also applies to the, uh, the vaccine, which is going to generate an antibody response. Now, critically, it doesn't mention memory T cells in this. Is it that the memory T cells are going to be able to, to uh, eradicate both forms of the virus? the old form and the cluster 5 mutant, we don't know, we're not told that. But there is this difference in uh, antibody neutralizing ability, it's reduced in the new virus, meaning that the new virus has got the ability, it would appear, to cause disease in people that have previously had the old virus. How much cross immunity there'll be, we don't know, but I think you get the idea of why this is, why this is a concern now. Um, <clears throat> so it's transferred from minks to minks, it's transferred from minks to people, and it's transferred from people to people and uh, back to minks again. So basically we seem to have an interchangeability of the virus here, as this virus appears to be moving relatively freely, it must be said, between humans and, uh, and minks. Now this is what we call a spillover um, infection. It's spread from one species to the other. It's a zoonotic event. And uh, there's genetic modifications in the virus that have occurred as, it's, as a result of its experience in the minks. And there's been evolution of the virus changes. The, 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 the mutation change has been perpetuated because the mutation change makes it more adapted to spreading in mink. And then it's gone back to people. So it is, it is a mutational change and then these evolutionary natural selection processes work on it. Natural selection applies to viruses just the same way as it applies to anyone else. So if a virus is more suited to survive in its environment, in this case the environment, the environment would be inside the minks, then the virus which is most suited to survive and propagate inside the mink, that would be the virus which becomes most prevalent because that would be the virus that gets into the cells is able to get into the cells, therefore is able to reproduce. So it's a simple natural selection process that we see working here, but it's meant, meant this mutated strain has got back to humans. Now there's been other mink cases in, in other countries. We don't know if any of these have reduced immunity or not. Um, We've no reason to suspect they do because we haven't been informed. And as you can see, these are all fairly sophisticated countries where that sort of thing should be analysed. Now the Danish authorities uh, culling all farm mink, more than 17 million in Denmark. I think we said there was 5.6 million people or something in Denmark. 6 million people-ish, low population, way more minks than people. Now I must say, um, 
I've been absolutely taken aback. I'm going to show you some links later on. I can't show you the pictures for copyright reasons. But I've been actually appalled in the conditions these minks are kept in. White, small wire cages all clustered together. Just a recipe for disaster, apart from being, in my view, completely inhumane and unacceptable. Um, you know, this pandemic, if anything good has come from this, one of the things might be is that humans have to completely rethink their interactions with all animals on this planet. We can't survive without animals because human beings can only live in ecosystems. But we're going to have to do a lot of rethinking. Personally, I don't find it inconvenient not to wear mink coats. I mean, I don't know what it's like where you are, but in, in, in British culture now, wear, wearing a fur coat is not socially acceptable. It's just seen as outrageous. The, the, these mink are primarily sold to the Hong Kong and Chinese market, I believe. So uh, it's an appalling situation. They live in these small wire cages, then they're killed for the coats. It's just, just not acceptable in, in, modern, in modern terms. I mean, if we needed it to prevent people dying of hypothermia, that's one thing, but we don't. We can make cheap artificial fabrics that are absolutely brilliant, really, quite readily. <clears throat> anyway, Danish authorities enhancing surveillance of the local population to detect all COVID-19 cases. Then they're going to sequence them. Um, Population-wide mass PCR, the definitive antigen, preliminarised chain reaction testing for the region of North Jutland, diverting resources away from the rest of um, Denmark. Expanding the percentage of sequence of human mink in, yeah, expanding the percentage of sequencing of human and mink SARS coronavirus 2 infections in Denmark. So they're going to be doing more sequencing. Now, do, do, doing the PCR test is one thing, but then to actually do a genetic sequence, you've got to send it away to a genetic laboratory and a full sophisticated scientific analysis has to be done. They're going to do that more often. But it's the fact that they were doing that at all in Denmark means that they were able to identify this in the first place. Could this have occurred in other areas where genetic sequencing technology is not yet readily available or has not been thought of? That, that, that's, that's, um, that's the disconcerting possibility. Uh, the, 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 the Danish authorities have agreed to rapid sharing of full genome sequences and the mink variants of SARS. Uh, it's all going to be open. It's all going to be done in public otherwise, other than previous uh, uh, episodes in this pandemic that could be mentioned. And uh, they're introducing new movement restrictions, pretty well closing off these areas. So the Danish authorities have to say, given uh, the somewhat slow start are now reacting well, but this has been going on since September. So it could be, it could be, we don't know, given this has been going on since September, I'm afraid at this point, we don't know how far this mutation's got. Let's hope it's restricted to the North Jutland Western area, but we don't know that at the moment. Unknowns, will this affect diagnostics? Will it affect therapeutics? Will it affect vaccines that are in development? Doesn't seem to be affecting diagnostics. It seems to have had a diagnose in uh, Denmark, but could it affect these other things? We simply don't know at the moment. WHO advice. Further virological studies, obviously. Uh, transmission and severity of disease, of the disease it causes. So in other words, will this, um, will this mutant be more transmissible? Will it be less transmissible? Doesn't look like it. Um, will it cause more severe disease? Will it cause less severe disease? Don't know yet. These things need to be found out. Uh, advising all countries to increase sequencing. So this is a very good point, actually. What they're saying here is, well, what, see, what do we know about the sequencing in, in your country? What, what, what strain of the virus is causing outbreaks where you are? Because a lot of sequencing is not being done. There needs to be more sequencing. So that is a very good point. And these, the needs to be open publications where everyone can see it. Enhanced events for COVID-19 at the animal-human interface. I would go further. We need to rethink our relationship with animals in many, many ways, I would think, at the moment. Uh, reducing the risks. Avoid close contact with people. Okay. 
all, all the things we would expect. Uh, frequent hand washing, a cough etiquette, nothing new there. These same things, of course, apply. Uh, enhanced standard of infection control in hospitals, emergency care facilities, and especially in emergency departments, they are adv advocating. So um, good advice anyway. But let's hope they're giving that out just because it's good advice anyway. Now, um, obviously, the travel bans are now in place in the UK and uh, Germany's joined in as well. Now, all cabin crew and pilots on board British Airways and Ryanair flights arriving from Denmark instructed to quarantine for 14 days along with their families. This is an increase in biosecurity here. Children of these families not allowed to go to school for at least two weeks. 3,000 passengers travelled from Denmark to Britain in the last week. And as we say, this has probably been going on since September, so things we don't know yet. Germany's taken similar precautions, and yet we saw that as of yesterday, and as indeed I think today, there's still international flights leaving Denmark. So even although this northern area and the western area of Jutland of Denmark, where the virus has been identified, is closed off, uh, UK and Germany are stopping all travel from, um, from Denmark. Uh, only nationals and people with rights of residence in the UK are allowed to return. They have to quarantine for 14 days with their families and the children of those families not allowed to go to school. Road haulage, um, likewise, is being stopped. Um, <clears throat> foreign lorry drivers travelling through Denmark turn back from the UK borders, <clears throat> or will be. Obviously, they won't come because they know they'll be turned back. And the Home Secretary, Priti Patel, uh, in order to, direct quotes, in order to quickly and decisively, in order to respond quickly and decisively to the Latest coronavirus developments, visitors from Denmark arriving in the UK will not be permitted entry. Uh, British nationals, visa holders and permanent residents who have travelled to Denmark in the last 14 days will need to self-isolate along with their households. So we can see these governments are taking it um, pretty seriously. So that's where we're at at the moment. Um, the worst case scenario here, of course, is, is, an, is a new pandemic of another virus that people are not immune to and the vaccines won't work against. I don't think that's going to happen. I think there'll be partial immunity at least. But it is a concern. We know it's happened in Denmark because of good sequencing. Has it happened anywhere else is obviously a, a concern. So um, basically a lot of don't knows there. Um, and that's all I can say at the moment. But what we will do is just look at a little bit of the biology behind this now, if you want to stick around. So uh, RNA, <coughs> the ribonucleic acid. Uh, the genetic code is adenine, cytosine, neurocyl, and guanine, A, C, U, and G. And this forms together in, in the strands of uh, D, uh, uh, in the strands of the. Um, the RNA, you get long strands of it like this. So that's actually 30,000 bases. This goes on for 30,000 times. So big, long um, sequences of these four bases. Now what happens is three of these code for one amino acid. So that would be one amino acid. And then another three code for another amino acid. like that, and then another three code for another amino acid, an AA, and then these would join together. These form peptide bonds and join together. And that's what forms the protein. So interestingly, the, there's 20 amino acids uh, form viral proteins, just the same as, as there's 20 amino acids form proteins in us. All life on Earth is very much the same. And these are called codons. So all that's happened, for, for a mutation to occur, all that happens to happen is one of those has to change, say from a C to an A, and then that produces a different amino acid. It's a different one of the 20 amino acids. Therefore, the protein changes. That's, what he, that's the difference it makes. And if the protein changes, then the way that the string of amino acids fold to form shapes changes, and that changes the nature of the protein and changes the ability of the immune system to recognize 
the new mutation. So three bases code for one amino acid. They're called, they're called codons. It is a genetic code. Mutation is a change in uh, a base letter, therefore change in an amino acid. Um, therefore change in a protein, therefore change in protein shape, which may not be recognized as a familiar antigen by the immune system. So like just one letter change in the 30,000. How many changes there's been here? We, we don't know. There's probably been a few. We did learn in that mutation that was discovered, um, it was identified in New Zealand and the ship is now um, quarantined off the coast of Queensland that there have been 12 mutations. So 12 of these bases had changed. Presumably, <clears throat> well, it would mean that there's 12 different amino acids <clears throat> in the protein sequence. And the thing about this new Danish mutation is the protein sequences that are changed are in the spike protein, which is the bit that causes the infection. So really, it's very much a case of watch this space, but um, basically that's all I know about it at the moment. Right, that's today's video. Though. Now, yesterday, um, this, the, the, this is my vitamin D. This is all the vitamin D I've got left. <coughs> The last few times I've been to the supermarket, they've been sold out. So I think that's probably a good sign. <laughs> People are buying it. And uh, this, who's this from? This is from, uh, this is from, I'm from, 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 sorry. Lee Herbert has started put, put, putting out books with uh, reliable sayings on it. You've got to write your own book. There's nothing inside it. But uh, <coughs> just thought that was good. Follow the evidence wherever it leads, which is one of my reliable sayings. And of course, it's not one of my reliable sayings. I nicked it off the great Clive. Staples, Lewis, C.S. Lewis. Okay, um, thank you for watching as always.